Welcome to Entertainment Hub for another movie recap. Make sure to like and subscribe. The film opens in Egypt, circa 1290 BC, High Priest Imhotep engages in an affair with ANCK Su Naman, the mistress of Pharaoh Seti, despite strict rules that other men are forbidden to touch her. When the Pharaoh discovers their tryst, Imhotep and ANCK Su Naman murder the monarch. Imhotep is dragged away by his priests before the Pharaoh's guards can discover his involvement. ANCK Su Naman then kills herself, intending for Imhotep to resurrect her. After ANCK Su Naman's burial, Imhotep breaks into her crypt and steals her corpse. He and his priests flee across the desert to Hamanoptra, the city of the dead, where they begin the resurrection ceremony. However, they are caught by Seti's guards before the ritual can be completed, and ANCK Su Naman's soul is sent back to the underworld. For their sacrilege, Imhotep's priests are mummified alive, and Imhotep himself is forced to endure the curse of home die. His tongue is cut out and he is buried alive with a swarm of flesh-eating scarabs. The ritual curses him to become an immortal walking plague if he were ever to be resurrected. He is buried under high security, sealed away in a sarcophagus below a statue of the Egyptian god Anubis. If Imhotep were ever to be released, the powers that made him immortal would allow him to unleash a wave of destruction and death upon the earth. In 1926, Cairo librarian and aspiring Egyptologist, Evelyn Carnahan is presented with an intricate box and map by her bumbling brother Jonathan, who says he found it in Thebes. The map seems to point the way to the lost city of Hamanoptra, where all of the wealth of Egypt was supposedly stored. However, the museum curator, Dr. Bay, dismisses Hamanoptra as a myth and accidentally damages the map. Jonathan reveals he stole it from an American, revealed to be O'Connell, who is currently in prison, and may be able to tell more about Hamanoptra. Rick tells them that he knows the location of the city from his days in the Foreign Legion. He makes a deal with Evelyn to reveal the location of Hamanoptra, in exchange for Evelyn saving Rick from being hanged. Evelyn successfully negotiates his release from the prison warden by offering him 25% of the found treasure, however, the warden insists on coming along to protect his investment. They board a ship to start their expedition to the city, where they encounter a band of American treasure hunters led by the famed Egyptologist Dr. Alan Chamberlain, and guided by Benny Gabor, a cowardly former Legion soldier who served with Rick and also knows the location of the lost city. During the journey, the boat is invaded by Medjai soldiers who are looking for Evelyn's box and the map. The expedition manages to fight them off, but the map is lost and the boat goes up in flames, forcing the entire party to go ashore. Rick. Evelyn and Jonathan are separated from the other treasure hunters and procure camels at a nearby market. Since Rick knows the way to the city, they arrive at Hamanoptra at the same time as the other party, but due to tensions between the two groups, they start exploring the city in separate locations. The Americans discover a chest between the legs of the statue of Anubis. They have it opened by several of their carriers, but the chest is booby-trapped and the carriers die from an acid spray. In the meanwhile, Evelyn is looking for the Book of Amun-Ra, a solid gold book supposedly capable of taking life away. Her team discovers a tomb buried directly below the statue of Anubis. Evelyn's box turns out to function as a key that opens the tomb, inside there is a sarcophagus. Suddenly, the prison warden runs by, screaming in pain. He had found a decorative scarab, but it contained a real scarab that entered his body and ate away into his brain. The warden knocks himself into a wall and dies instantly. After a quiet evening outside, Rick and Evelyn get in a romantic mood, when suddenly, both groups are attacked by the Medjai, led by a warrior named Ardith Bay. Rick forces a standoff by lighting a stick of dynamite and threatening to blow everyone up. Bay warns them of the evil buried in the city, and gives them one day to leave. His groups then ride out. Rather than heed his warning, the two expeditions continue to work on their respective projects. The sarcophagus is opened, and contains the gory remains of Emotep. The team of Americans, meanwhile, open the chest, in spite of a warning on its lid that threatens to kill everyone who takes its contents. They discover the Black Book of the Dead, accompanied by canopic jars carrying ANCK Su Naman's preserved organs. Each of the Americans takes a jar as loot, while Dr. Chamberlain takes the book, but Benny flees the scene out of fear for the curse. At night, Evelyn takes the Book of the Dead from the American's tent, her key also fits on it. She reads a page aloud accidentally awakening Emotep's mummified remains. Immediately, the first plague announces itself. 
a swarm of locusts invades the terrain, forcing everyone inside the city. The entire group is separated into smaller parties when a giant army of scarabs breaks loose and eats everything in its path. One of the Americans gets lost and is attacked by Emotep, who takes his eyes and tongue while partially regenerating his body. Evelyn also encounters Emotep, and he seems to recognize her as ANCK Sunaman. However, Rick shoots him down before everyone flees the catacombs. They run into Ardith and his group of Medjai warriors again. He berates them for resuccessing Emotep, who will now bring along death and destruction. The only thing to do is flee the city, until a way can be found to kill him again. The entire group leaves, but Benny is left behind. He also encounters Emotep, but successfully pleads for his life, and is allowed to become his slave. Both groups return to Cairo. Rick and the Americans plan to leave Egypt, but Evelyn decides to stay, reasoning that releasing the curse was their fault, so they have the responsibility to stop Emotep. That afternoon, the next plague announces itself, water turning into blood, signaling that Emotep is nearby. The group deduces that Emotep will go after the four men who took the Book of the Dead in the Canopic Jars. Benny has indeed taken Emotep to Cairo, helping him trace the Americans. Rick and Jonathan track down the American whose eyes were stolen, they find his desiccated body, and Emotep slowly regenerating his own. Rick tries to kill Emotep but he is invulnerable to weapons, only the presence of a cat in the room startles him, and he flees in a dust storm. Rick returns to his quarters as the second plague starts, violent hailstorms ravage the city. He locks Evelyn in her room to keep her safe from Emotep, ordering the remaining two Americans to stand guard while he and Jonathan leave to warn Dr. Chamberlain. The doctor's chamber is empty, but they witness Emotep killing Dr. Chamberlain in the streets, taking the black book and releasing a swarm of flies. Emotep proceeds to Evelyn, entering the room and consuming the body of the American on guard. He enters the sleeping Evelyn's bedroom through the keyhole by transforming into sand and tries to kiss her. Rick, Jonathan and the remaining American enter and scare him away by threatening him with a cat. The group goes to the museum, hoping that the museum curator Dr. Bay may have some answers. Evelyn hypothesizes that if the Black Book of the Dead brought Emotep back to life, the Gold Book of Amun-Ra can kill the High Priest once again. The group finds a tablet in the museum that describes the location of both books, and Evelyn deduces that the gold book must be buried beneath the statue of Horus. At that moment, a large group of natives, covered in boils and sores and under Emotep's spell, surround the museum. The heroes leave the museum by car, but the remaining American is captured during the pursuit, and consumed by Emotep. Finally cornered by his followers, the fully regenerated Emotep offers Evelyn to come with him, in exchange for letting the others go. She agrees, but as they leave, Emotep goes back on his words. Dr. Bay sacrifices his life by holding back the crowd of followers while the rest flee through the sewers. Rick, Jonathan and Ardith enlist the help of Winston Havelock, a disillusioned World War I fighter pilot, to fly them over to Hamanoptra. Emotep returns to Hamanoptra in a sandstorm, carrying Evelyn and Benny, pursued by Rick's plane. Emotep uses his powers to cause a huge sandstorm, but distracted by Evelyn, he only succeeds in letting the plane make an emergency crash landing, killing only Winston. Rick, Jonathan and Ardith enter Hamanoptra and discover a new area full of Hamanoptra's famed treasures. They quickly get into a battle with Emotep's resurrected mummy priests, so they make their way to the statue of Horus, where they find the Book of Amun-Ra. However, when cornered by the priests, Ardith sacrifices himself to allow Rick and Jonathan to escape. Emotep, in the meanwhile, has resurrected the mummified remains of ANCK Su Naman and is preparing to sacrifice Evelyn, when Rick and Jonathan interfere. Rick frees Evelyn from a group of mummies, while Jonathan reads an inscription on the book in order to kill Emotep. Unfortunately, this only summons a group of mummified guards, who chase after Rick, while Evelyn is attacked by the resurrected ANCK Su Naman. Jonathan succeeds in finishing the inscription, giving him command of the guards just before they kill Rick, he commands the guards to kill ANCK Su Naman. Emotep turns his anger towards Rick, while Jonathan and Evelyn succeed in opening the Book of Amun-Ra. Emotep is about to kill Rick when Evelyn recites the counter curse. Emotep's immortal soul is taken from him, and he becomes mortal. Rick fatally stabs him, and rapidly decaying into a mummy again, Emotep leaves the world of the living, vowing revenge. Benny, who was secretly dragging treasure outside, accidentally sets off an ancient booby trap. 
As Hamanoptera begins to collapse into the sand, Rick, Evelyn and Jonathan race towards the exit, with Jonathan accidentally dropping the gold book. Benny remains behind, and is trapped and eaten by a swarm of flesh-eating scarabs. The heroes escape before Hamanoptera disappears in the sand. Ardith, who has unexpectedly survived, waits for them outside and thanks them for their help. All three ride off into the sunset on a pair of camels laden with Benny's treasure. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.